With his Star Wars contract completed, George Lucas now needed a rebel force up to the challenge of production. In the summer of 1975, he founded the visual effects company Industrial Light and Magic. There was no special effects companies in those days, and the studio's special effects department had been disbanded. Part of that was because of the expense, and part of it was that the American taste, the culture had gone toward very realistic looking films. We approached the visual effects as a, as a grand experiment and saying, can we do this with a lot of people who work on architectural models and in commercials and, and have never made feature films before? We were kind of like a weird kind of fraternity of robotic photography nuts or something like that. I mean, this was a big movie for Fox. We were doing commercials. Uh, we all dreamed about doing a feature, and this was like the dream come true. So Star Wars came along just the perfect time for us. We moved into a big, empty warehouse in Van Nuys, right near the Van Nuys airport, and basically started from scratch. I mean, it was empty. I mean, early days, you used to park your car inside. There was no cam equipment, no rooms to speak of. Supervising at ILM was John Dykstra, an effects cameraman who had worked under Douglas Trumbull on films like Silent Running. I was essentially to be responsible for doing the visual effects for the film. We took the concept of motion control, which is essentially an old concept of being able to duplicate camera motion through more than one pass so that you can generate multiple elements of film, and we made it production savvy by tying it into a computer, which was at that point custom-built microprocessors. There were no PCs. You didn't go down buying a PC. We, we built them from scratch. At the same time the camera system was being built, another team began constructing model spaceships. I was one of the early hires. They had a small art department, and there were some concept models uh, made out of uh, cardboard and uh, model kit pieces. Uh, there were some storyboards and some concept illustrations that uh, Joe Johnson had done. There were some paintings that Ralph McQuarrie had done. Everything came either from my sketches or Ralph's paintings and, and drawings and uh, any input that George might have, you know. There wasn't a lot of outside influences on Star Wars. George wanted it to look like you could actually see the rivets, so you could see the logic of how it was made. I was originally hired to work on the Death Star, the uh, 40 foot by, oh, what was it, 40 by 80 feet or 40 by 60 feet or something like that. Nobody wanted to do the job because you had to spend a lot of time on your knees. Everybody sort of could cross train and work in different techniques. That was different than the Hollywood system that had very strict sort of union rules. But there was no way that this work could be done that way, or no way that the Hollywood unions could understand what we were doing. 